Good evening, it's Friday, April 27th, 2018, and this is my first video at Platte River State Park since I filmed Redeeming the Time this past October. And as we're seeing the signs of the times coming together, it seems appropriate to call this video Chosen Generation. And by the way, the construction you see going on over here is for building 32 campsites. And moving along with 1 Peter 2, and verses 9 through 11. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Luke 21 goes into a lot of detail about the prophecies with the sign and the sun and the moon and Israel being referred to as the fig tree. And Luke 21 tells us that the generation that sees the fig tree budding, that sees Israel become a nation, shall not pass until all these prophecies are fulfilled. So, the signs of these times are very specific from New and Old Testament prophets and even Jesus Christ himself who told us of the prophecies while he was walking on this earth. Moving on to look at 2 Peter chapter 3 starting in verse 3 knowing this first that they shall come in the last days, scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were, from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire, against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So we have several things to reflect back on with verse 8, mentioning the connection as one day as a thousand years. Many people have seen a connection of creation being six days and God resting on the seventh day, paralleling with the earth going on about 6,000 years since Adam and Eve, the thousand years of the millennium after the tribulation, representing the day God rested the thousand years. But looking further on to verse 9, as many of us have been anticipating the rapture at any time, and it's obvious that the time is very close, although None of us know the day or hour. 
But it is in God's perfect timing. But for whatever amount of time that God would have us to be here until the rapture, we're to be encouraging the lost, the lukewarm, the backsliders. Uh, we're also to be making sure that we're walking as close as we can in our life to Jesus Christ. So instead of being disappointed that the rapture hasn't happened yet, we're to see this as another opportunity, as God still has more work for his people to do. And in God's perfect timing, he will take those who are ready out of harm's way via the rapture. So those who have passed away over the years that were ready to meet him are already with them now. And those who are alive and remain at the time of the rapture will simply be changed by passing death, which is the promise of escape that was made for those who are following Jesus Christ at whatever time the rapture occurs. Remember, a chosen generation. And this is the parking lot for Stone Creek Falls along the main road to Platte River State Park. And to take a quick look at the park map, having started in the cabins around uh, Camp Owen, going just south of Owen Landing and the lake, and now we're at that parking lot, going to follow Stone Creek north, past the falls, and on towards Platte River. And picking up in James 4, verses 7 through 10. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. So I'm sure you remember some old sayings like pride comes before a fall. And Jesus Christ was humble. And as we're following his example, he would have us to be humble as well. So even though we are that chosen generation, we're to be humble and thankful for all that God does for us and seeking constantly to be in his will. Taking a look at James chapter 5, and verses 8 through 11. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. And by the way, this is the picture uh, the cover picture, the thumbnail, whatever you want to call it, for my first video, which was filmed here at Platte River State Park a little over a year ago. And that was before the trail was graveled last June. As we continue on with Ephesians chapter 5, and verses 15 through 17. See then that you walk circumspectly, 
not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And verse 16, redeeming the time. That passage was used in my last video here from October under that title, Redeeming the Time. And the path on the left goes up a steep hill to the ball field just west of here. We'll continue north along Stone Creek past the waterfalls. And taking a look at 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 through 3, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them, which believe and know the truth. So that scripture ties in with how so many people have so many different beliefs these days that they are very religious about, that they feel is ultimately important to their religion. Although certain aspects of their beliefs have no basis in the Bible. And a lot of times it's tradition that just gets passed down along the years. But as we seek to draw closer in our relationship with Jesus Christ, we're to walk away from putting all our confidence in traditions and make sure that we're focusing on the Scripture. It's okay to have different family traditions and things as long as they're in accordance to a Christian lifestyle and definitely not opposing the Word of God. So we're to take time to be holy and be thankful. Here's the path that comes down the hill from the amphitheater and we're getting close to the falls. Picking up in 2 Timothy 3, in verses 1 through 5, This we know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. And we've reached Stone Creek Falls just around this bend. My children really love to play in this creek. It's shallow, but very peaceful. And flows through the center of Platte River State Park. And taking a look at 2 Timothy 4, starting in verse 1, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure 
sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Stone Creek Falls, definitely nothing like Niagara Falls, but nevertheless very peaceful. A lot of people like to dip their feet in the water here and take pictures, have a picnic and so on. Of course, we're still remembering that in these last days, We've witnessed, especially in recent decades, how the world around us has changed very rapidly to be more like the world the Bible describes in the tribulation and great tribulation years. So even as we're thankful for all the Lord has provided us, as we seek to be close in our walk with the Lord, we're also to be aware of the times that we're in so we can be encouraging those around us. And the path to the right follows an old roadbed, comes out behind the park office. We're continuing north along Stone Creek towards Platte River. Let's take a look at Luke 18 verses 7 and 8. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. As we move along to Titus chapter 2, in verses 11 through 14. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we, shall, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. So in verse 13, blessed hope is a reference to the rapture, which we know is definitely in our generation. And we're expecting at any time, any day and hour of God's choosing for the times that we're living in. And in verse 14, about being peculiar people, as we choose to follow Jesus Christ and not the ways of the world, the worldly and the ungodly will find us to be peculiar. As they definitely consider Jesus Christ to be peculiar. And zealous of good works. Even knowing that works aren't what saves us, 
but it's by faith and mercy through Jesus Christ. As we take a look at Titus chapter 3, in verses 3 through 7, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. In 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 through 18, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So if you were a child when Israel became a nation about 70 years ago, you're probably retired now and uh, enjoying the golden years. But even much more specific than this, we're seeing countries align themselves together against Israel and taking the sides that the Bible said they would be taking in these last days. The many signs in the sun and the moon that the Bible described even last year with the Revelation 12 sign on September 23rd and the eclipse from August 21st, 2017. Looking at Habakkuk 2, in verses 3 and 4, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. And looking at Daniel, chapter 12, verse 10, Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And I hear a train coming, Dropping down to Romans 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose.
So even as you see the train going by, being ready for the rapture is a, like, a lot like being on board to escape the things that are coming upon the whole earth. Let's take a look at Proverbs 3 and verses 4 through 7. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Remember, chosen generation.